Well, wonderful. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you so much. Uh, and also, Eric, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, giving us access to your uh, platform. That is great. So uh, I'm really happy to kick it off uh, from here. And uh, just to give you a short introduction into who Team RGE are, I mean, remoting graphics experts. Uh, it looks like a real company. In reality, it's just a community group. It's completely non-commercial. And this is why we made this uh, completely non-commercial uh, event. So no registration fees and all of that. So uh, it's from the community for the community. And it all started a couple of years ago. So the core team was only three of us. Uh, it was Ruben and myself, plus it was Sean Bass, who is the uh, CTO for the EOC business in VMware now. Uh, which is interesting. So one of us uh, turned into an executive uh, at VMware. So uh, that's that that's an interesting thing to watch. But the team was growing really rapidly. So uh, instead of having a small car, now we need a bus. And uh, so, for example, only for this event, you see the number of people who contribute to this event. So uh, starting with Gabe, who already did the intro, and you can read all the names, and these are the speakers uh, that we have lined up for this event uh, today. But we also have more people, and you see them on the, on the right side. Some of them, uh, they were trying uh, to do a session uh, today, but some of them, unfortunately, didn't have time to because they had other um, obligations, other customer appointments. So uh, they uh, decided that they cannot uh, join us uh, this time, but they definitely want to join us next time. So you see the lineup of people, uh, which is really great. I, I really love it to have conversations with the uh, members of this team. It's, it's very inspiring because it goes across the vendors that are uh, well present in this market, GPU market, as well as the field engineers that are out there at customers. And uh, so we can share our thoughts and, uh, well, as a result, uh, we can create those sessions or we can also build tools and you will learn about tools and ideas that we have within this group uh, throughout the sessions that we will present today. And just to give you an impression that other communities are involved as well. So the members of Team RGE are also members of all these community groups that you see on this slide. So it's Microsoft, it's VMware, it's NVIDIA, it's Parallels, it's Citrix, it's Nutanix, it's a Citrix user group. So uh, you see the what Matrix group, the VDI uh, like a pro, the AppWord guru. Uh, so, oh, the Go EUC, they just renamed uh, recently. <laughs> so I'm still struggling with the logo. Uh, but now, yes, Go EOC, that's also a Dutch community team, and uh, we are really happy that they're also member, members in uh, Team RGE. So this is pure community power, and uh, so we're going to take it from here. And I want to pass the floor to Ruben, because I have two full sessions later today. So Ruben is going to take the rest of the keynote to present his market perspective 2019-2020. Hey, take it away, Ruben. Good, thanks. Yeah, looking forward to that. Exciting as well. Like uh, a little bit sweaty hands, to be honest. But <laughs> it's good. Good. Hey, Benny's definitely not just going to go work on his presentation right now, is he? Is no. <laughs> oh, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy the webcam uh, didn't connect. Not sure why, but all, all right. good. Um, maybe, maybe you've seen this on social, a 10-year challenge. And maybe you remember these uh, these phones like 10 years ago eh, with battery life, like unlimited battery life. Great. You can learn from that. And 10 years ago, maybe this was your home lab, or maybe this was your data center. And with modern and uh, modern data center technology, this will ch this is changing. And maybe you remember this like 10 years ago. You had more chocolate in a chocolate bar than you have uh, have these days. And maybe Benny's walk Benny just walked away. So maybe this is Benny's uh, view. You never know, right? Over time, vision becomes a little bit blurry. <laughs> and this is like me uh, 10 years ago, like a big six pack, workout great. And then when you join a couple of startups, the six pack becomes uh, different. So yeah, that's also uh, the reality. But also 10 years ago, we talked about the year of VDI and we still do. And actually it's the same t-shirt. So probably not so much happened. 
So what happened with the year of VDI, 2019, 2020, it's like a running joke in our industry, the year of VDI. And there are some, of course, it's like a, it's a joke, but there's also some serious conversations in that. And I want to spend a little bit of time on, on that side. So is this the year of VDI? Uh, Brian, uh, Johan, and other community friends, they, uh, they have their views. Uh, everyone has a view on that, that's, that's great. And I wanna share my, my view. What if, so what if a large IT vendor announces running apps, 4K, 60 FPS, high-end graphics, run instantly, anywhere access, no clients, no agents, browser as the platform, always getting better on the fly, in essence, remote apps dot next dot next, like a next version of, of remote app. And it's available pretty soon, 2019, 2020. And the audience is 2.2 billion people. Maybe now this grabs your attention. This is Stadia by Google. This is a gaming streaming service. And when you look at the technology behind this gaming streaming service, with regions, with zones, with a remote protocol, with encoders and decoders and GPUs, this is VDI. All the tech we use on our, like in a, on a daily basis in designing VDI infrastructures, the same concepts apply to Stadia and other gaming streaming services in the near future. Like Microsoft is busy with that. Uh, Sony is busy with gaming streaming as a service. And so does Google. Welcome to Stadia. 60 FPS, 4K, HDR, 5.1 surround sound. But for sure, you need a decent network connection to make that happen at this uh, this resolution. But this is VDI. So is this a year of VDI? Well, when Google enters this space with a lot of like buzz and with big uh, game brands behind that, that is the year of VDI. That's why 2020 is the year of VDI. And people are wondering, hey, this is a nice, uh, nice tattoo. Yeah, sometimes you think you know people and then they surprise you with uh, with interesting tattoos, but boom, 2020 is the year of VDI. Maybe a different application than you maybe used to do, but that's that's also reality. 20, 10 years ago, public cloud services and cloud services were not existing as we know it today. So things are changing, including year of VDI. Another community friend, Jack, uh, wrote about that in uh, one of the Tech Target blog posts. And they did a survey where you can clearly see that this is like this year, the, 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 they see a huge increase in requests and planning requests around VDI. Around more than 2,000 people filled in this survey. It's great to see that uh, also friends like Jack uh, see that in, uh, in the field. Also, to be, to, be, to be fair and honest, yes, year of VDI is, is happening, but also the bigger competitor is not... Citrix versus VMware, or VMware versus Frame, or Frame versus Citrix, or pick pick your favorite vendor, right? It's more like the rich client, the PC, the mobile apps, the uh, SaaS and web applications. All these things combined are the modern workspace. That's also the reality. During my talk, I will use some content. We as VDI Like a Pro with uh, with Mark and Christian, uh, like another community, as, men as, as Benny mentioned, I will share some new not published results of the EUC State of the Union Survey 2019. So you will see that over time. And Mark and Christian and myself, we formed this team and hopefully you like the content. Somewhere in time we'll create a report like a PDF, uh, which you can download, but I will uh, share some new results not published before. Is Windows relevant? All great when you talk about the year of VDI, but when Windows is not relevant, then VDI isn't relevant in the context of business applications. Who cares about Windows apps and in the context of cloud and mobile first uh, world? Well, that's a question we asked um, when you look at the survey results. And you can clearly see that one third of the people who filled in the survey, almost 600 people filled in the survey, they see that Windows apps are like 100%. And 60 to 100% of the apps are Windows apps are still a large amount of people. So Windows apps are here to stay. This drop, Benny and I, we talked about, about this drop earlier this morning. Like, why is that? Because the easy to migrate apps, like Windows to SaaS, Windows to web, Windows to mobile, these easy apps are migrated. And all the tough apps, the Windows apps, are still here and here for a long time. What about Win 10? What kind of OS do you use for VDI? And it's great to see that Win 10 is conquering this world rapidly. Like Win 10 is the main OS platform for desktop VMs, like VDI and um, 
both in public cloud where it applies and on-premises environment. So why did the year of VDI not happen in the past 10 years? Because of cost, complexity, and user experience. And Team RGE is all about user experience. You will learn much more uh, today, or if you watch the recording later, you will, you will learn as well, great. So how to make the year of VDI happen? Although that's not the goal per se, the goal is how can we support end users? How can we make end users happier? And sometimes that is with VDI, sometimes with, with other kinds of uh, solutions. But VDI for sure is a great asset in the, in the toolbox. One of the core elements is the infrastructure, the foundation. The foundation should be simple, high performance and cost efficient. Prior to me working for Frame, I worked for a uh, software defined storage uh, uh, solution. Before I joined that company, I worked for PQR as a large system integrator. The foundation of infrastructure in VDI is super important. And again, it should be high performance and cost efficient and simple. And I also believe that it's not like an on off switch. It's like much more granular where you can, in this case, like change the lighting uh, to be more bright as an example. And I also believe in modern data centers, vendors like Dell, like Nutanix, like Cisco, like Lenovo, these like the vendors in this space, in the on-prem space, they are very focused and strong in modular building blocks, like Lego, Lego building blocks. And that's great because it will help us as end user computing industry to create a linear scalable VDI infrastructure or application remoting infrastructure or service computing infrastructure. So asking the question, what kind of storage technology, not vendor, that's not, not what I wanna share here, that's not what I mean. What kind of technology are you using? It is interesting and, and see that SAN is declining, hybrids, all flash, uh, spinning drives and that's local storage even including spinning drives which was a surprise for me when I saw this but local flash local spinning drive and local storage in software divine storage and hyperconverged but building a scale out storage fabric are all like increasing rapidly and that's that's really helpful in fixing solving this quote here of VDI challenge also public cloud services are disrupting the norm we'll talk about that more uh, later today um, but one of the uh, topics is what kind of on-premises VDI solution do you currently use? And you see Citrix declining, VMware increasing, Microsoft increasing, Workspot declining, Parallels uh, small but slowly uh, growing, which also says something like, hey, what is happening in this space, both on-premises and as a service? And with, for instance, Microsoft WVD, but also the acquisition of Frame um, by Nutanix, there's like a new wind uh, happening. New, new wind is in that space of as a service, desktop as a service, application remoting as a service, and connecting as a service sometimes to on-premises resources. That's happening, and that's what is disrupting the norm. And you can also see this in this slide. What what is the like the most important EUC initiative? Win 10, Office 365, one and two, and th the third one is desktop as a service. Amazon Workspace, Citrus Cloud, Frame, Microsoft RDM, RDS, Modern, modern Infrastructure, RDMI, um, like these vendors in, in our space. These are like high priority for almost 600 people who filled in the survey. And then if, a little bit deeper, what kind of vendor is appealing? Or what, what, what sounds interesting? Look at, look at this one here. You see the none we won't use public cloud is dropping from 2018 to 2019 from let's see 22 percent to five percent so a lot of colleagues in our industry really s investigate maybe introduce new solutions a public cloud is disrupting the norm that's what you see in this picture and with microsoft wvd windows virtual desktops with uh, with citrix with amazon with nutanix frame uh, with vmware different vendors in this space entering uh, the public cloud uh, like services um, and user computing services, which is great. Microsoft entering this desktop as a service space with WVD also acknowledges this market. Benny always shares like, hey, Microsoft is not here to make uh, 100 million uh, euros dollars. They are here for the for the big money. And my simple conclusion is they are here because it's about consumption of Azure. It's about making Office 365 more sticky. It's about competing against Amazon workspaces. It's about delivering a new solution because the old solution, Azure Remote App, 
and these type of like quote quote enterprise VDI solutions didn't work in public cloud. So that's what that's why Microsoft is entering this space. And also because more and more customers are adding more data in public cloud. So we all know, or many of us know, when the app and the data are close to each other, that will give the best user experience. That's why this modern infrastructure, RDMI, Windows Virtual Desktop, it makes a ton of sense. And this is what I mentioned earlier, like apps and data are getting closer to each other. So when my data is moving to cloud or segments of data are moving to cloud, why not run these apps in public cloud as well? Welcome to public cloud disrupting the norm. So what are, talking about cloud, what are the biggest challenges of adopting public cloud? That's the question we asked with VDI Like a Pro. And you can see cost, legal regulation, performance, and later we will talk more about performance. So stay tuned uh, also for one of the sessions at the end. And trust, these are the four big challenges people all across the globe see uh, face with public cloud services. So please, please don't be a lemming. A cloud first doesn't mean cloud only. Uh, there are many options, on-prem, hybrid, public cloud, and choose what fits best. And what is your use case? What's the idea? What's the problem you want to solve? And what I see often is that the reality is hybrid. For certain use cases, you public cloud. Other use cases, you use on-prem. Uh, you find the right use case for the right uh, solution and not the other way around. So complexity, cost, check, check. Let's focus a little bit more on user experience and performance. When we talk about user experience and performance, you can also differentiate between user experience and platform performance. I think it's good to make that differentiation because user experience, Benny will show, and also I think Rodi and uh, Patrick will show later, insights about real user experience and other colleagues will share insights about platform performance. And both are valuable, but will answer qu different questions. Um, so both are valuable. User experience of what the end user will see, platform performance is much more scalability, sizing, best practices in an on-premises environment. Because who cares about platform performance testing validation in a public cloud? In on-premises, this is much more important. But in public cloud, this platform itself, so platform scalability testing shouldn't be the main focus. Maybe you want to see, maybe want to do some, some testing with RDSH or win 10 multi-user and see how many users I can, get, I can run on a single machine. That's still a valid topic. But scalability testing and see how Azure or how uh, Frame or whatever kind of platform, how that platform scales is not, that's, that's the service. You, don't, you shouldn't care about that particular topic. So platform scalability testing in public cloud is not something we should care about. Focusing on Win10, uh, best practices, finding these practices, yes, that makes total sense. And there are tools to, to help with, uh, with that kind of scalability testing. This uh, almost famous quote, uh, or part of that quote, is from, uh, from the Rex team, from Kristen and from, from Benny. Hey, your job, my job, our job as in the industry, or as IT pro, or consultant or whatever the role you have is to de shitty user experience. That could be on different levels, managing expectations, use practices, um, maybe change processes, introduce new tools and we'll talk about that and we'll demonstrate that later to, uh, today as well. So that's what you can do to fix a shitty user experience. Also in user experience and performance is the role of GPUs. Team remote graphics experts is about one of the elements is about GPUs. That's how we started maybe 10 years ago, something like that, right? With protocol and GPU, a protocol GPU and GPU versus CPU type of comparison. And we, we still do. You will see and learn later today about that. So there are many GPU options with Intel and AMD and Nvidia. We'll share in the next session more about, about that. One of the questions we ask, what kind of GPU do you use for on-prem? And you can see that the biggest competitor is not Intel versus AMD versus Nvidia, but the biggest competitor is, ah, I don't need a GPU. And maybe that's right, maybe you don't. But it could also be, well, maybe you don't know yet that you need a GPU. 
it is great to see that slowly Nvidia is coming to that point that they take over like the okay, I don't need a GPU type of uh, of use case. And unfortunately, like Intel is not existing here, and AMD is like extreme tiny. Um, why? Unfortunately, because I believe or we believe that competition is a very healthy uh, healthy thing because iron sharpens iron more competition from amd and intel and nvidia is a very good thing it will speed up innovation it will maybe drive down cost maybe remove licensing type of conversation whatever the challenge is when there's competition things are more fluid um, and that's a that's a healthy and a good thing so to solve complexity cost and user experience that's okay welcome in this, in our world there are many elements to solve complexity to cost and user experience. And I tried to address a couple of these things in this, like what is happening in our industry overview. So with that, we, uh, we are here for, uh, for the next, uh, next slot.